Yeah. You're still watching the Afia Morning Show here on Afia Television. If you're just joining us, good morning. You join us from GoTV, YouTube, Facebook, any platform. Good morning to you and thank you for being a part of the show today. Whenever we mention the Enugu Onitsha Expressway, the first thing that comes to mind is an accident-prone scene. You will recall that last year, the Federal Executive Council approved the takeover of the construction work on the Enugu Onitsha Expressway by MTN Nigeria. Now, with the outcome of these constructions, we have to ask, is this the new model for public, people, private partnerships in the Southeast? To shed more light on the constructions and what this means for the South is and the prospects for these partnerships, we do have Dr. Reginald Faka, Coordinator Community Liaison Initiative, CCGE MTN on the Onicha Enugu Dual Carriageway Project. Thank you for joining us and good morning to you, sir. Good morning, madam. You're welcome good to the show. Thank morning. you so much. I mean, we, we have a lot to talk about today. Certainly. But I would like to know your holistic assessment on the Enugu Onicha Expressway, past versus present. Past, thank you very much, and uh, good morning once again. Good morning. Um, Enugu Onisha Expressway it used to have a past. The present just took over when MTN came on the scene. Um, the road has been a, an albatross on the neck of successive federal governments. Um, just couldn't get it up to speed. Bad roads, potholes, accident prone. But um, 18 months ago or thereabouts, MTN came on the scene to fund the road. Um, it was a novel idea by the federal government, is the um, ROITC scheme. Well, we are definitely curious about the RITC scheme. I would like to find out more about it. That's something that we feel is, a, I mean, it's like the crux of this whole project. Please go ahead with your line of thought and financing this project, what it was like. RITC, broadly defined, is um, the road infrastructure development and refurbishment investment tax scheme, tax credit scheme. It's actually a form of um, PPP, uh, the private-public partnership, um, but it's an advanced form of it in the sense that um, the government brings in nothing to the table, but investors pull in all the funds to get it work, um, to get it up to speed. Um, it's a tax scheme whereby the promoter or the investor uses 50% um, of the tax for the year on any given, for now it's for road projects, on any given road, it's a massive work. We're talking about hundreds of, I mean, tens of billions of naira. It's, it's big, it's huge. Um, it's a initiative by the federal government to woo private sector into participating in developing infrastructure, especially roads in Nigeria. And so far, so good, it has worked. Because, um, like I said earlier, before now, the Enugu Onisha um, Dual Carriageway we like calling it 107 kilometer times two because a dual carriageway yes. is to and fro. Um, was an eyesore. It has claimed lives. It has, it's, it's, it's just bad. It's so bad that um, South Easterners who are used to coming home for Christmas, who love the Christmas so much, would stay back in the Lagos, stay back abroad because of that road. And now MTN came on board um, 18 months ago, and it has been a good story so far. In fact, someone once told me that um, getting this scheme to work is perhaps MTN's um, greatest PRO OKU in Nigeria. Because wherever you go on that road now, the sweet story of MTN is being told. Um, last year, by December or so, if you observe, we had to open up the Amobia flyover just for the Christmas season to ease the movement. The road opened from Amobia through um, down to Inteje before you go back to the one way. And that flyover for more than eight years was closed. But because MTN is working so hard with the Federal Ministry of Works, because this RITC is a special scheme that involves the Federal Ministry of Works, the Federal Inner Revenue um, Service, and the Federal Ministry of Finance, of course, the MTN, pack, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole package. It took a long while before they, get, they got it off the ground. We also opened up the um, ninth mile section down, down to Ziago. You just go straight from Ngo, straight down. Good road, beautiful roads. Um, the roads are such that they are time tested. Talking about quality now. Um, 
accidentally MTN um, inherited the contractors on site, the subcontractors who are ROCC, Reynolds Construction Company. Um, there's a person on the road they did around UDI. I passed there last week and we were talking. The project manager told me that, you know, this thing was done eight years ago, that before MTN came on the scene. And I said, wow, it looked so new, still solid, good, good gutters, good shoulders, good dividers, solid structure. And this is because the quality control and quality assurance on this road is top notch. Project managers is um, over up, and then the QA and the QS is um, crank press global engineers, which is where I function. Um, we are also the um, community liaison initiative consultants on the road also, where we interface with all stakeholders along the work corridors. My interest is to know that we meet the people, we meet the egoists, we meet the PGs, to ask them, this road, how is it functioning? How is it helping you? Are there issues we can sort out? Carrying the people along. That is it. It's a synergy we have created. That's why the CLI, Black on CLI, Community Liaison Initiative, is actually a baby of the MTN. This is what you see more, you see it more in the riverine areas, the oil companies, where this community liaison something, but they brought it on board here to use this expressway as a model for maybe future road work in the country um, in time to come. Divine. Okay, so <laughs> I was just going, I'm trying to process a lot of things and I, I'm going to ask, what are the ways, what other ways do you think that this can be replicated? Uh, um, let me put it this way. First of all, I'd like to know what factors contributed to the decision to undertake this construction project. First, let's start there. Um, the federal government somehow, oh, I didn't say something about the RITC. The company, the promoters, the investors use 50% of their um, tax for the year, for every given year, on the job, on the project and then they pay 50% into government coffers for other projects. So it's not a total 100% tax scheme. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, please, your question again. What factor necessitated your taking up this construction project? MTN has always been people-oriented. Um, and the federal government is also doing its best to get over hurdles that have been in the way of construction. Okay. We know the Prime Minister of Works, they are doing a human's job. Um, but then, you always have this Nigerian factor come into play. I mean, if you travel along our roads, you construct a part of the road, and then they will shut down the other section of the road. Mm. By the time you come back to this other section, mm. the constructed part is already down. Several factors. Motivation of the staff. Okay. Poor um, material being used wrong planning, wrong drainages, ETC, ETC, ETC. Now, okay. when the private driven uh, projects come on board, there's a difference because okay. they want to make sure every Naira would count. No loopholes, no lapses, no room for corruption. Everybody, all hands on deck to ensure the, the work is done. So I think it's that factor, that's the, the background Okay. Nice. Background. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Just let me come in okay. there. Sorry. Um, when the constructions were going on, there were lots of reported delays. People said that the construction was delayed and that it was leading to even more traffic congestion there. And beyond traffic congestion, accidents because people having to struggle to you know avoid the construction area. So I would like to know and hear from you what actually led to those delays. What were those challenges encountered in the course of this construction? You know, life itself is all about challenges. And um, uh, like they say, you can't make an omelette without breaking the eggs. Um, but essentially, the, the subcontractors, um, ROCC and Niger Cat, uh, working in tandem with the Federal Ministry of Works, and of course, the, the consultants, um, CCGE and Overop, they've been at their best trying to contain whatever inconveniences the people will go through using that road. And that's why the CLI, the Community Engineering, was set up to interface. And since we came on, funny enough, we're like um, 
two, three, four months old on this beat, we've um, intervened in a very strong way. Um, the Federal Safety Corps, we are partners with them. They are always, well, sorry for the word, at our beck and call. Each time there's an issue, we give a call, they come in. If you move from the night mine session, for instance, and you're going through Ugo Yema, Danto, Udi, and so on, the night, the, the, the night mine in 70, the, that intersection, you see a lot of accidents prone areas. You know, the hills, the up hills, the valleys, and lots of um, reticulated trucks, the trailers, they take that route. So each time they have a fault, each time they make a wrong turn, most times they overturn. And once they overturn, traffic will build up. Before now, the traffic can be there for half a day, at times for the whole day. But since we came on board, that is MTA, you know, we're just like 18 months old on that route. Um, since we come on board, once and since we interface a lot with the Federal Safety Corps and the police and also the military, we have this thing, once it happens, once we know, we get the call, we place the call, and then it gets sorted out. For instance, when we opened up the Amobia bypass during the Christmas period, the issue of dust came up as the drivers would go through the road. Funny enough, they, begin to, they, they began to, take to, to, to run too much speed. The dust would pile up. They complained and we reacted immediately. We called the contractors, ROCC, and the very next day, in fact, the commissioner for transport um, in Anambra State, um, a beautiful lady, I've forgotten her name, she called me. There was an Abuja then, and I called the contractors, and the next day, they moved to site with water tankers to beat down the dust that early morning, so that before the traffic would build up, the dust would come in. Okay. Now, the MOT in Enugu State is also doing a great job. Right now, we are at the end of the work. The, the upper end is too deep. And then, of course, the traffic should build up because a portion was closed for the road work. There is only one portion now cut into two. The Air Force is also doing a beautiful work there along with Federal Safety. They, they have moved their checkpoints just for this work because we, they are stake, they, we are stakeholders on this. We, we, we have interfaced with them. So they put their men on the beats. The, 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 the AOC, um, the Air Force uh, officer commanding the, the, the Air Force base in Enugu is also a great partner. They put them in there. So it's not as bad as it used to be. Okay, let me, let me just try to you know, retrace our step. The question yeah. I asked is, these are all valid, but what was the major thing that led to delays? Because we're talking about hundreds of people who lost their lives, not just when the contract started, but even prior to it because of the dangers of the Enugu on Expressway. Mm -hmm. So when it came to construction and carrying out the contract, MTN carrying out that responsibility, what, am what accounted for the delay? That's the, the question. Since MTN came to, to the show, as it were, delays have been very minimal. The only slight, the only slight delay we had, remember we are 18 months old on this beat, was when, um, the, the new minister came on board, and there was this issue of asphalt and concrete and so on. And then, but well, it was less than two, three weeks. It was sorted out, it was handled, and then we went back to site, and the work, work has not stopped. Um, the work percentage so far, because by this time, by this time next year, you will be able to drive from Nguo, in the two deep, right through to Oka. The plan is to push it down to Onisha so that you have one clear way to Onisha from Enugu unhindered while we finish up on the other part of the road. The plan for this road is to have a freeway where you get on board and then you take a dash straight to Onisha without the, the interstate, the, 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 the intersections we turned into um, what they call. Um, I'm not a technical man now, but I think what they call this inter interstate, um, this long round thing, so that we have one at night mile, my other one at Amansi, then at the end of the road, that you just drive through while the old road will be prepared right. and made ready so All that right. you want to drive fast, you come on board the dual carriage way, you want to go slow, and then you take your other way, and then both sides are working well. Okay, briefly, now I would like you to, first, I believe that the 
MTN stepping in to take on this project has helped, has aided the livelihood, greatly, greatly. Live, um, livelihood of people, you know, standard of living, reduced accidents and all of that. And I want to also believe that it has aided in, you know, lifting the burden of the government a little. So I'd like to know what ways do you think that a similar arrangement can be replicated in order to enhance other critical infrastructure needs in the state? And also, do you think that this will lead to some sort of relaxation in the, on the part of the government, of course? You know, there's these arguments about uh, government and infrastructure and development. Like people will say, government has no business being in business. Government should be about governance. The private sector can drive infrastructure development. And then this ROITC scheme is a novel idea. It's, I wouldn't say it's the most beautiful thing from the Board administration, but it's one of the best schemes that they came on. And um, but that's helped. It's not only MTN that's doing it for instance, but I won't mention other names, but quite a number of big companies, multinationals, big companies in Nigeria, they are also doing, using the same thing. Even the NNPC is also doing an RITC project somewhere in Nigeria. They are all over the place, Dangote, Boa, Cement, and so on. Um, it has taken the weight of government, but essentially it has reduced the ratio of corruption in our workings especially in road construction, because huge amount of money go into road construction. And where you cannot account for the Naira and the Kobo becomes an issue. So I think that's government, um, um, that's the, the driving force. And like I said, it's coming replicated because MTN is doing it Origin. perfectly well, mm -hmm. and I know other companies are also doing it perfectly well. But it, can, it should go also into other parts of the economy, I mean, education, development, um, medicals, health, and so on. Interestingly, I just mentioned education um, uh, health. We are, you know, the community liaison initiative, like I said, is people-centered. It's to interface between the MTN, the contractors, and the communities and peoples along the expressway. You know, uh, we've been having meetings. We talk with them. We go to the villages to see them. We see the Igwe. We talk. We discuss, they give us their needs, we take it to our superiors, we look at them, and then we intervene. For instance, during the Christmas period and so on, we graded a lot, lots of roads, interior village roads to open up so that access can be easy for people to, to, to go in at no cost to the communities. All right, we are out of time, but we cannot leave without talking about what has troubled Enugu residents for a long or seemingly, in fact, a very long time now. And that is a new artisan bridge that has since fallen. We do have a temporary crossing now, but we still miss our new artisan bridge. It seems to be taking the federal government ages to finally take action to reconstruct it. Using this case study, how can a public-private partnership fix that defaulting bridge? In just under a minute, if you can. You know, I'm smiling. Because I'm not the PRO of the Flavility of Works, and neither am I. And our work is Onisha Enugu Expressway. That Artisan Bridge is under the Port Harcourt Enugu Expressway. Uh, I will only appeal to the federal government to also expedite work on the bridge. I know work is going on, but it might be slow, but work is going on. Now, the question I asked is yeah. I'm speaking about a service provider such as MT and a private business perhaps stepping in to fix that road. So I'm looking away from the Onitra Expressway as a burning issue. Okay. Like I said, the bridge has been down for a long period of time. That's true. If the federal government, through the Ministry of Works, decides to engage a private partner, perhaps in some of these renovations and maintenance that happen, you know, we still need the maintenance in all of this infrastructure. I'm trying to speak on the topic prospects for PPP in the Southeast. Okay. Using this as a case study, how can a PPP work? That's my question. PPP is always a beautiful idea. Anywhere it's well practiced. And the Arrow ITC scheme has enhanced it. So if the government um, gets to the point of inviting a conglomerate, inviting a big company, multinational, to take over that aspect of the role, you don't know, perhaps as we speak, 
meetings are going on, they are having meetings and negotiations mm -hmm. just to put that Enugu Potakot Expressway um, on the radar and into this scheme. But I know that a lot of work has gone on on that road. You can really drive, I mean, down your Kigwe back end, work is going on there, very serious work, just that the bridge fell and then the bridge needs to be built. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Dr. Reginald <laughs> Faka, you. for Thank being here so today much. and speaking to, of course, the Inigwanja Expressway topic. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Thank you.